White female cop illegally arrests a black man for no reason on the street. Turns out he is a police captain. What happens when an officer makes the gravest mistake of her career by arresting the wrong person? And what if that person holds more power than she could ever imagine? Buckle up, you won't believe what happens next. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more jaw-dropping videos like this. So, let's get started. It was an ordinary afternoon, or so it seemed. The bustling downtown streets echoed with the familiar hum of life. Street vendors hawked their wares, business people hurried by, and tourists snapped photos of the city skyline. George Anthony, a middle-aged black man, strolled down the sidewalk. He appeared to be just another face in the crowd, blending in with the everyday routine of urban life. Dressed in casual attire, he didn't stand out. But in a few moments, that would change drastically. Suddenly, the wail of a police siren pierced the air, and a squad car sped toward George. The tires screeched to a halt beside him. Officer Emily Davis, a white female cop, jumped out, her hand instinctively hovering near her holstered gun. The tension was palpable from the moment she set eyes on George. Something about him, or perhaps the situation, had put her on edge. But why? George wasn't doing anything illegal. He was merely walking, minding his own business. Hey you! Officer Davis barked as she marched toward him, her eyes blazing with suspicion. The force of her presence sent a ripple of discomfort through the passersby. What do you think you're doing out here? She demanded, her voice sharp, full of unearned authority. George stopped, utterly perplexed. He hadn't even seen her coming. Excuse me? He asked, his tone calm but clearly confused. His eyes met hers, trying to make sense of the hostility radiating from her stance. He wasn't a criminal, and he certainly hadn't broken any laws. What reason could she possibly have to stop him? Onlookers slowed down, curiosity peaked as they observed the unfolding scene. The city was no stranger to police encounters, but something about this one felt different. Why had she targeted George? The tension crackled in the air, an invisible thread linking every witness to the scene. Was this racial profiling at play, or something even more sinister? Before George could ask another question, Officer Davis took things further, much further. Without warning, she slapped handcuffs onto his wrists, her face hard and unyielding. You're under arrest for suspicious behavior, she declared. Suspicious? George's mind raced. Suspicious of what? He hadn't committed a crime. This was madness. The bystanders, some of whom had already started recording with their phones, exchanged uneasy glances. Whispers circulated through the growing crowd. What did he do? Asked a woman nearby, her voice uncertain. Others shook their heads, puzzled. George's calm demeanor and unthreatening appearance made this sudden escalation all the more perplexing. Why are they arresting him? Someone murmured. Excuse me, officer. George spoke up as Officer Davis began pulling him toward the police cruiser. You sure you want to do this? Her grip tightened. She wasn't interested in a dialogue. Stop resisting, she snapped, though George wasn't resisting at all. In fact, he was cooperating more than most would in such an unjust situation. But his cooperation seemed to fuel her aggression. The scene turned surreal as George maintained his composure, even as his freedom was being stripped away before a crowd of strangers. Inside, however, a storm brewed. Should he reveal who he was, or should he let this power-hungry officer dig herself deeper into a hole of her own making? As the door to the police cruiser opened, George once again looked at Officer Davis with a calm yet foreboding expression. You really want to go through with this? He asked, his voice low but commanding. For the first time, doubt flickered across Officer Davis's face. It was there, just for a split second, before she pushed it aside. She had committed to this course of action, and her pride wouldn't allow her to back down now. I'm sure, she responded, with a smirk that barely masked the growing unease in her eyes. Phones continued to record as George was shoved into the back of the cruiser. The murmurs from the crowd grew louder, more restless. They could sense something wasn't right, but they didn't yet know the full story. A young man named Francis, who had been watching from a distance, decided to step forward. He cautiously approached Officer Davis. Hey, what's he being arrested for? He didn't do anything. Officer Davis snapped her attention to Francis, her authority now threatened. Back off. He's been acting suspiciously. Francis stared at her, incredulous. Suspicious how? 
His voice echoed what everyone else was thinking, but no one dared to ask. At this point, the tension was boiling over. The crowd was growing restless, questioning what they were witnessing. What had started as an ordinary day had spiraled into a public spectacle. But as Officer Davis drove George away, there was an overwhelming sense that this was far from over. When they reached the police precinct, Officer Davis walked George inside, still holding on to her misguided confidence. She led him through the booking area, handing him over to the desk sergeant like she had done countless times with other arrests. But this time, something was different. The desk sergeant looked up, ready to process another detainee. But when his eyes landed on George, his entire demeanor changed. His face went ashen and his voice stammered. Captain George, what, what are you doing here? A deathly silence filled the precinct. Officers stopped what they were doing and turned to watch. The name George Anthony had weight in this building. He wasn't just a man off the street. He was a police captain, one of the most respected and high-ranking officers in the department. Officer Davis, hearing the sergeant's words, froze. Captain, she whispered, the blood draining from her face. The full magnitude of her mistake hit her like a tidal wave. This wasn't just a wrongful arrest. This was a career-ending catastrophe. She had manhandled her own superior. Captain George looked at her with a calm but piercing gaze as his cuffs were swiftly removed. I tried to warn you, he said quietly. His voice was calm, but the weight of disappointment was evident. Another officer, sensing the growing tension, approached Officer Davis. Do you have any idea what you've done? Officer Davis was speechless. She had arrested a man based on an assumption, a fatal assumption, and now her world was crumbling around her. The whispers spread like wildfire. George Anthony wasn't just any black man walking the streets. He was their captain. The reality of her actions hit her harder than any punishment the department could deliver. I'm sorry, Captain. I... I didn't know, she muttered, her voice barely audible. That's the problem, officer, Captain George said, his tone steady. You didn't care to know. The gravity of his words hung in the air. A heavy indictment of not just her actions, but the larger system of assumptions and biases that had fueled this encounter. Officer Davis had acted on instinct, but that instinct was tainted by something darker. Something that could no longer be ignored. The precinct was buzzing now. Phones buzzed with messages, and within hours, the story had spread beyond the walls of the building, igniting a firestorm of controversy. The police department had no choice but to act swiftly. Officer Davis was immediately placed on administrative leave, pending an internal investigation. The Internal Affairs Division launched a comprehensive probe, analyzing not just this arrest, but Officer Davis's entire record. Had there been other instances where her actions crossed the line? Had she acted on similar assumptions in the past? The investigation aimed to determine whether this incident was part of a larger pattern or a one-time catastrophic mistake. As news of the wrongful arrest spread, public outcry erupted. Activists, community leaders, and even members of the police department demanded accountability. This wasn't just about a single officer's actions, it was about the systemic issues that allowed such bias to influence policing. The department held a press conference, promising transparency and accountability. The findings of the internal investigation were damning. Officer Davis had violated department protocol by arresting George without probable cause. Her actions were ruled as misconduct, influenced by racial bias. The police chief, speaking publicly, emphasized the department's zero-tolerance policy for such behavior and announced that Officer Davis would face disciplinary measures. The consequences were severe. Officer Davis was suspended without pay for an extended period, with the possibility of termination hanging over her head. But the department didn't stop there. To ensure this kind of incident never happened again, mandatory racial bias training was implemented across the entire force. Officers were required to undergo recertification to ensure they understood the legal and ethical standards of probable cause and to address any unconscious biases that could influence their decision-making in the field. The department made it clear this wasn't just about punishing one officer. It was about sending a message to every officer on the force. Racial bias, even unconscious, would not be tolerated. Mistakes like Officer Davis's would lead to serious consequences, both professionally and legally.
The case served as a reminder that every decision made in uniform could have life-altering consequences, not just for the officers, but for the people they serve. The public had demanded change, and the department had responded. But for Officer Davis, the damage was already done. Her reputation was shattered, and her future in law enforcement was uncertain. Do you think the officer should be given a second chance?